used to go to a local Starbucks when I resided at San Jose. The coffee shop was always the perfect place to go for students like myself, who preferred to study and do their homework in a cafe. One of the perks was getting to use their free Wi-Fi, while getting an endless supply of coffee to help keep us awake to study throughout the night. During most of my college curriculum, I would make the most of the Starbucks by staying there until the coffee shop closed. So, as a regular customer there, I knew all of the staff and became familiar with the rotating shifts, including the seasonal change of the menu. But that's not all. I was also keen on watching other customers come and go. It became such a daily habit that I quickly recognized a creepy customer coming into the store. But unlike all the students and young professionals who came in and out of the shop, this person was an old hag, constantly harassing people, especially the staff. First, she'd make all sorts of demands whenever she asked the workers to customize her coffee. Let me get one venti blonde roast hazelnut latte with substitute regular milk for soy milk, two pumps of sugar cookie syrup, three pumps of cinnamon dolce syrup, one pump of dark Caramel, light ice, salted caramel, cold foam on top, three dashes of vanilla powder, caramel brulee topping, three extra shots of blonde espresso, and six shots of sugar-free vanilla syrup. Now hurry up and make it before I give you one star on Yelp, you ginger! Then, she'd holler out loud, saying a bunch of nonsensical stuff, so without thinking twice, it gave me the impression that this lady was nuts. There was a time when she asked the staff to add all the sugar they had at their disposal in her drink. The worker expressed her concern for the old lady's health. However, the old lady responded with rage. She relentlessly slammed her fists on the countertop while giving her demands. The janitor tried to calm her down, but it only made her even more hysterical. Moments later, she picked up a chair and threw it across the floor, provoking one of the staff to call the cops. As a result, some customers were getting anxious and reluctant to approach the line, while others simply left the shop to avoid trouble. This creepy old woman was bad for business, so at this point, point, I prayed for the police to arrive as soon as possible before things got out of hand. But before the cops could get to Starbucks, the old lady spat on the floor and quickly left. I thought that would be the end of it. However, one night, when only one employee was doing all of the tasks while I was studying for an upcoming exam, I asked for a refill on my drink. But as soon as the beverage was brought to me, I spotted something disturbing. There was something unpleasant with the odor and color of the drink. I didn't know how to describe it, but it smelled like there was some kind of chemical in the drink, giving it the colors green and yellow. It looked so weird that I was scared to drink it. I had never seen anything like it at Starbucks before, and it was the first time I encountered something so abhorrent that I wanted to puke. When I glanced at the employee, I noticed she was new on the job. I wanted a refund for my beverage since the prices at Starbucks never came cheap. I then complained and even accused her of mixing the wrong ingredients, but she was confused. The newbie said she knew exactly what she was doing when she made my drink. I then began to feel more concerned now than annoyed, but it all made sense when something disturbing went down in the next few seconds. Out of nowhere, the same old woman from before ran out of the kitchen toward the front door. But before she could leave, the barista caught up with her attempting to apprehend the woman. I'm not interested in ginger women, so get off me before I give you more emotional damage! I stood there in shock, not knowing whether I should intervene or call the cops, but it was all too late, because after a minute of tussling back and forth, the old lady managed to escape and drove off in a vehicle. That's when the barista ran out of the shop and began taking snapshots of the license plate. As the culprit left, I made a call to 911, reporting everything that happened. About half an hour later, they arrived and immediately asked us for the surveillance footage. The police relied heavy on the various snapshots of the car license plate and were able to identify and locate the culprit. About a week or two later, word got around that the woman was eventually detained in her residence. When police searched her home, 
They found out that she kept gallons of rubbing alcohol scattered across the floor and living room and kitchen area. At first, the cops speculated that she was running a business selling disinfectants, but after investigating the kitchen at Starbucks, they found clues connecting the large bottles of alcohol at the culprit's house and the drinks at the coffee shop, indicating that the chemical compositions were precisely the same. When the woman was taken into custody and questioned at the station, she denied all the evidence pointing to her as the suspect. It was concluded that she was somehow able to sneak into the back rooms of the shop and and intentionally taint some of the ingredients with the hazardous chemicals she had brought from her home. I was so relieved that I didn't take a sip of that awful concoction and that the lunatic was arrested before anyone else could get hurt. This story was inspired by a case that happened at a San Jose Starbucks. A woman was arrested under the suspicion of tampering and attempting to put bottles of orange juice mixed with a lethal dosage of rubbing alcohol into the refrigerator of the coffee shop. A woman named Ramine was later arrested after police received a call from the manager of the Starbucks, reporting suspicious activity inside the store. Below was a mugshot of the culprit in question. I've been stuck working at Starbucks full-time for longer than I'd like to admit. Even worse, I used to work the morning shift every single day, which took an even greater toll on my mental health. I'd have to go in at the crack of dawn to immediately start taking orders and making drinks, when I barely had time to wake up after dragging myself out of bed. After a while, the striking regularity of the routine started to make everything feel unreal, like I was just a robot repeating the same tasks over and over again for the exact same set of people, day in and day out. Around where I live, most of the early morning heads were truckers or construction workers that all looked similar, especially the people that come in the drive through which is where I was always stationed. Of course, there were a few exceptions. The one that always gave me the worst time was this specific cranky old Karen that would always come through and order multiple ridiculously complex drinks that each had just about every possible ingredient in them. As soon as I noticed her car pull up, I had to prepare myself to deal with her. But unfortunately, that wasn't the only thing odd about her. Every time I saw her, I would see these horribly creepy dolls in the passenger and back seats around her. They were strapped in and pointed to face me at the window like this crazy old lady thought they were real people. I always assumed she was bonkers and ordered most of the drinks for the dolls. She came here so often that I even started to memorize her orders. I knew exactly what she was going to say, but I also knew she was going to pretend to ask her family. For this reason, I always tried to get her through as quickly as possible, but due to her Karen nature, she would have to have it her way. Good morning. What can I get for you today? Excuse me? What did you just say? I said, what can I get for you today? Don't rush me, nuthugger. Can't you see I'm in the middle of a discussion with my family? My apologies. Please, take your time. Thank you. Now, what does everyone want? Oh my god, I can't believe this woman. Every day is like this. Doesn't she have plenty of time to think about what she's going to get while she's waiting? Ugh. You just gotta have all the attention you can possibly get, can't you? I hope you rot in hell, you old hag. Hello? Anybody in there? I said I'm ready to order! Huh? Uh, oh, my apologies, ma'am. What's your order? All right, little boy. I'll take a grande iced... Well, would you look at that. I was right. You're getting the same exact thing you always get. And I can tell by the way your wrinkly, flabby old lips are flapping. <gasps> and two extra shots of espresso. Did you get all that? It seemed like you weren't paying attention. Nope, I got all of it. Just give me a moment and I'll have it right out for you. You better make it right this time, boy. Don't make me throw my dentures at you. When do I ever make it wrong? I've been here dealing with you for years. You're just like all the other crazy people, a creature of habit. You'll never change until you drop dead. I guarantee it. Now, what was that other one again? Uh, oh yeah. Here you go. 
I can tell this is wrong. Are you deaf or were you just not listening to what I said? Ma'am, I can assure you that every drink was made to order. Would you at least try them before you criticize the way I do my job? <gasps> Don't you dare give me an attitude, boy. I demand to see your manager right now. That's how just about every day went with that woman. Despite the fact that she was clearly insane and I was doing everything she asked, nothing was ever good enough for her. There was always something wrong with the way I was doing things. One morning, I eventually reached my limit and simply had enough. The woman placed her order and I was just about ready to deliver her drinks. That's when I headed to the drive through window and said, Here you go, ma'am. Enjoy the rest of your morning. Excuse me, where is the rest? Huh? Oh, you mean the other drinks you ordered. Well, our store policy has changed. We now only serve real human beings and refuse to fulfill orders for creepy dolls like the ones you think are your family. What did you just say? Don't disrespect my family, you worthless minimum wage coffee guzzling caffeine rat. Come here! Get off of me, you creep! Let me go or I'm calling the cops! The cops can't save you if you're already dead! I said back off! What the hell is wrong with you, lady? No! It's what's wrong with you! Consider this a return! After that incident, I ended up with partial second-degree burns on my face. I then had a chat with my manager and argued that I was justified because the woman was completely crazy and that she always had these creepy dolls in the car with her. However, the manager didn't believe me and decided to pull up the security footage to prove it. When he opened it up, I was in complete shock at what I saw. In the woman's car was a real family of actual living people on every Every single occasion she came to the Starbucks. Ah! This story was submitted by a viewer in which he alleged was true. The viewer claims that he really did hallucinate and see those dolls in the lady's car while working at Starbucks as a barista. One can only speculate that the hallucinations came from early morning fatigue or potentially something that was laced in his coffee for that short period. Hey babe, what's up? Are you on your way home yet? Yeah, just got off work and heading home right now. Can you get me a Starbucks? I could use something tasty. I got the late night sweet tooth thing going on again. I can give you something sweet after you do cardio later. Just get me my Starbucks, damn it! I'm not trying to have my back broken for a measly one minute of cardio! All right, sweetheart, you got it. I didn't want to go to Starbucks that night. I just finished a 12 hour shift and I was really tired. I just wanted to head home and go to sleep. She always texted me over a dozen ingredients that she wanted in her drink. I can't understand how anyone wants all that junk in their coffee. I drove to the nearest Starbucks, which was way out of the way on route. I pulled up to the drive through first, but nobody came to the window. However, I could still see inside to the front counter though. There was a barista standing by the register, completely ignoring me. Hello, are you still open? She didn't budge when I tried to get her attention. She just twitched. The barista kept looking straight ahead into the store, and she was oddly wearing shackles on her wrists and ankles. What the hell? I thought she was wearing them as some sort of fashion statement. I know that's a stretch, but I didn't want to believe she was being held captive there. I never even heard of that happening, but I've seen lots of people wearing strange outfits before. I was also really tired and just wanted to get home. I would have gone home then if I didn't know my wife would make me go back out. So I pulled around to the parking lot to go inside. They weren't even supposed to be open for walking in, but clearly the only person working there wasn't running the drive through so I had no other option. The door wasn't locked either. I marched in there and was about to go full Karen, and then I saw her face. It was a strange woman with the creepiest, strangest smile I'd ever seen. She wore this crown on her head and this look that gave me chills. What made things even more strange was how she started to twitch even more when I stood in front of her. Uh, hello? Hi there, what can I get for you today? Oh, so you are open. Alright then. Here, it's for my wife. Can you get me all of this in one drink? 
As she grabbed the phone out of my hands, I tried my best to ignore the obvious shackles on her wrists. Once I had a better look at them, it was a lot harder to trick myself into thinking she was wearing them intentionally. I remember seeing these visible marks from where they'd been digging into her skin. Will that be all? Yeah, just that. I held out some cash to pay for the drink, but she didn't take it. Instead, she stared at me for an uncomfortably long time. It freaked me out. I thought she was about to cry for help or something. So, how was your day? <sighs> Look lady, I've got a wife, alright? Tell me to call the cops or take my money and make my drink. I want to go home! No problem, sir. Out of nowhere, I witnessed something I'll never get out of my head. Without breaking eye contact, she bent her arms backwards and stretched them all the way to the drink station on the counter behind her. She made the entire drink like that, not even looking at what she was doing. But somehow she made it perfectly. When she was done, she brought it back and handed it to me. I was at a complete loss for words. She hadn't even moved her feet or turned around. That's when I understood why she was twitching and acting like a freak. Because she was a freak. Here you go. Should I make one for me too? We can talk over coffee. Stay the hell away from me, you creep! I snatched the drink from her hand and ran straight out of there. I drove home trying to make sense of what I'd seen, but I couldn't. Nothing went right from the moment I pulled up to that Starbucks. I decided the best course of action was to act like nothing strange happened at all and did my best to forget about it. I didn't tell my wife a single thing. The only way I could ever describe that woman was some kind of ghoul. Hello, how may I help you? Drop it. It's me. Oh, am it's I... the last time you failed to carry the report in the Starbucks conversation. Do you understand? Please! I tried! I really did! Please don't kill me! Just don't get it! All you have to do is get them to talk to you! It should be the easiest thing in the world with how pretty you are! But somehow you all keep screwing it up! Please! I'll be better! I'll be Don't you think you should have let that motivate you to do better? Mm -hmm. Well, it's too late for that now! This is the only thing you're good for! All of you! All of you will now be served coffee for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of your life! Ha 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 ha!